Good morning, everybody. So last week, we celebrated America and what's so special about America. And as we enter the second half of 2021, I wanted to explore the future of our community, our Heavenly Parents Holy Community. You know, what kind of future do we want to create together? What kind of future would you be excited about and love to create together? So that's why I'm titling today's I Heart Holy Communities. So let's take a look. So let's start with the vision. Always, you know, want to start with the end goal in mind. So what is our vision? Well, one thing we know is uh, uh, we have uh, scripture that helps us to understand by starting with God's original dream for us. Let's read from the, this is from the Mother of Peace. God's dream is for all people in the world to live with gratitude in the peaceful, happy realm of God's love. To achieve this, we knew we had to stir up a revolutionary culture of heart. Um, I want to touch on this a little bit, this revolutionary culture of heart. Um, in our community, we're really big on developing uh, this, uh, these four realms of heart, uh, which includes our heart for our parents, our heart for us, our spouse, our heart for our siblings, and our heart for our children. And this is a really important aspect of, of growth and development in our own lives and in our families that can expand to the rest of the community world. So this revolutionary culture of heart really stems from expanding our capacity, capacity to love, um, starting with our heart for God. Now, there was God's dream, and then uh, we also have uh, the mission that was given by God uh, to establish the true parents here on earth. In order for this world to be restored through true love and true family, first, the internal position of true parents needs to be established. God called me for the sake of the accomplishment of this mission. This is from Father Moon. I myself have been teaching true parentism, educating each person to become a true parent who embodies this tradition. I guide people to first become true parents in the family, then to fulfill their mission as tribal messiahs, the true parents of their tribe. Our task to establish the age of the harmonious one world family by fundamentally solving the conflicts between races and the struggles between religions can only be accomplished through true parentism. So we have God's dream. We also have the mission of true parents, which is really about having this parental heart for all people in this world. And finally, heavenly America. What does a heavenly America look like? So I'm going to break it down again. So we started with God's overall dream of one family under God. We have the mission of true parents bringing this culture of parentism uh, that can actually bring people from different backgrounds, different nations, religions even, to come together under parental love. And then we're bringing it down to America. So what does a heavenly America look like? So let's read. When this nation and the world is overflowing with blessed families, God's dream, true parents' hope, and the one family, one human family's hope can become reality. A world of genuine freedom, equality, peace, unity, and happiness is not far off. When all of you gathered here today become one with true parents and practice living for the sake of others with true love, towards those around you, your tribe, your church, and your nation, we can build a united world with our own hands. So what does the heavenly America look like? Uh, what I see is a bunch of holy communities that honor God, respect our true parents, receive the blessing, and are experiencing this culture of heart. 
So now that we have a vision in mind of what that might look like, let's go into our strategy. How do we actually build that kind of America? How do we build these holy communities that can actually bring about a world of peace? Well, I'd like to share, you know, my idea is really about building our brand around three things. Three things that we as a community can become known for. The first uh, is that those who are part of our community should all experience a fulfilling filial life. A fulfilling, it's hard to pronounce, fulfilling filial life. You know, Jesus replied in Mass, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. You know, one of the things that Jesus brought to this world was this idea of being able to love God as your father, as our father. So I want our community to be known for members who or people who just love God that can have this kind of filial heart in everything that they do. That's part of who we are as a holy community it is a community of people who really love God. Let's read. If we were to capture the distinctive feature of the unification movement in one phrase, it would be the culture of filial heart, for which I coined the Korean word hyojang, which signifies sincere devotion and love toward our heavenly parent. This is Mother Moon speaking. Heart for which my husband coined the Korean word Shinjong is the essence of beauty and original root of love. It is beauty that stimulates love to surge forth eternally uh, from the mother of peace. So yes, imagine a, a community full of people who really find their purpose and find the joy in living a filial life uh, with God. You know, when I was um, on a mission training program, this is way back when, maybe 20 years ago now, uh, I really was pursuing this kind of relationship with God. And I remember one moment I was deciding, you know, whether I need to go back to school at that time or not. And I offered a prayer to God asking, so God, you know, I'll do whatever you want to, but just tell me, should I continue on this mission training or should I go back to school? What do you think? And I remember, you know, God responding at that time, there was a kind of a, a thought that, that came as a response that anything you do, I will support you. Kind of like that. And that wasn't the answer I was looking for. So I, I decided to do another prayer condition and uh, really say, okay, God, I get that you'll support me, whatever I do. but I want a little bit more specific guidance on what is it that you want me to do. So I, I set another condition and I prayed hard. And the response that came was interesting. It was, you know, again, a thought kind of occurred. It wasn't a booming voice, but in prayer, there was a thought, a clear thought that it came. And it was, there are so many people out there who are very capable even some more than you, but who among them are doing my will? And I remember feeling this, this sadness in, 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 in God's voice and also this kind of closeness. Um, and I remember feeling like whatever I can do to support God, that's where I wanted to be. And I found that, you know, since that time, I've continued to make decisions and choices in my life that really prioritize what I felt God would want me to do. Uh, and I feel like this is kind of uh, what it means to live a filial life to God. And again, I'm not sharing this to say anything about, you know, just my life, but I find what I'm sharing this is why I'm sharing this is because I find I found a lot of fulfillment in this and living living this way, and I 
you know, I've done many things. I've done my, I've developed my own business. I've I've uh, excelled in my academics and in martial arts and different things like that. But I haven't found anything as fulfilling as being able to respond to this kind of calling to you know pursue and support God's will for me. So I really want to encourage our whole community to really continually seek what is it that God wants me or God is asking me to do at this time. And I find that I, I really feel like you will find the most fulfillment through experiencing this filial heart, fulfilling filial life by seeking God's will for you. So let's become known as a community of people full of filial heart. So the second identity I'd like to really, our brand that I'd like to be known for in our community is our blessed families. In Genesis 1.28, it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. This is a passage um, from Father and Mother Moon. Heavenly parents' wish and humankind's wish is to form one human family attending their parents. Blessed families who know the providence and who have the qualifications and act accordingly. We need your devotion and effort. So blessed family members who are in the position of parents can open the path for those in the second and third generations who will become leaders in the future to realize this dream. So our blessed families, I feel like this is also another important aspect of who we are and our brand and our strategy for really bringing about a peaceful world. You know, our blessed couples, they committed their marriage for the sake of peace. Many of our couples, they married across cultural differences of national differences, and even some were between enemy nations. You know, America, Japan, Korea, Japan. Uh, we had countries, you know, Israeli and German. There's so many different intercultural, international marriages that came together with this commitment for peace. So being a blessed couple, being a blessed family is not all about just being a happy, great family. It's really about having this purpose of peace in mind and this purpose of God's dream in mind when coming together as a couple, as a family. So really, uh, I want our community to be known for our blessed families, that we bring union between enemy nations, modeling peace in, in our most important relationships in our, with our spouse, with our children, and even in our commitment in our marriage, this is to bring peace in the world. So let's become known as a community of blessed couples, of blessed families, um, and really be a blessing upon this world. And thirdly, I like our community to be known as peacemakers. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, we read, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Love that line. Let's read it again. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This is uh, from Father Moon. One thing I have practiced and taught through, through my life is the breaking down of barriers. We must rise above differences of race, religion, and nationality and live together. We are all members of a one world family living in brotherly heart, centering on God. This must not be a mere slogan or rhetoric. We must actually live this way. I want to be known, our community to be known as peacemakers, as reconciliation experts. I want us to invest in our community, learn how to provide healing and reconciliation among different challenges or breakdowns or walls that may exist in your local community. You know, we have many examples of this on a, on a global level. This is a Women's Federation for World Peace, which is a, an affiliate uh, or a providential organization. 
uh, founded by Father and Mother Moon, where they have this ceremony called the Bridge of Peace. And in there, we have representatives from different um, peoples, different nations, different cultures, different races coming together with this intention of healing, of reconciling, of working to together towards peace. Another providential organization uh, founded by Father and Mother Moon is uh, UPF, our Universal Peace Federation. And they did a whole series of Middle East peace initiatives where we, we had hundreds of people, thousands of people travel to the Middle East and bring about healing and reconciliation between the Abrahamic faiths. So here we see, uh, you know, a Jewish, Christian, and Muslim representative embracing each other. Um, so there are many efforts made to help bridge that kind of gap, this, this uh, lack of trust and conflict between these different Abrahamic faiths really coming together. Also, UPF not, uh, has gone beyond just the Abrahamic faiths and encouraged interfaith uh, cooperation through these local peace water ceremonies. And recently at the World Summit 2020, there, were, there was an international interreligious peace water ceremony with top leaders from across the world, religious and uh, uh, country leaders coming together for the sake of peace. So I want to also become on top of, you know, uh, being known for leading fulfilling filial lives, on top of becoming known for our blessed families, I want our community, our holy community to be known as a community of peacemakers. So the question is, well, how can I contribute? So we have this big vision of world peace. We have the strategy of branding ourselves as uh, filial children, blessed families, and as peacemakers. What can I do? Let's dig in. First thing is, I'd like you to offer your passion and talents for your community. And this takes some effort. You need to find out what you're excited about, what your passions are, what your strengths are, and communicate with your local pastor or local leader. And I want you to commit to offering something uh, to your community over the next six months. You know, for me, I, I remember I, I've done so much uh, leadership training uh, that was one of my real interests and passions from a young age, self-help books and uh, different leadership programs and starting to train other people in organization, public speaking, goal setting, whatnot. And I remember coming across uh, life coaching as one particular skill set. I, I quickly fell in love with it. I found it to be one of the most effective ways to empower others and raise leadership. So I remember when I was a CARP president, um, when I was in, um, appointed as a CARP president about eight years ago, my previous kind of mission, uh, I, I really developed my, my skills, got certified, trained, and started using that in CARP and in other, other realms that I could support. Um, through that kind of coaching training, I was able to also offer um, support in creating mission statements for Family Federation, for, for CARP, for other local churches. And I found that um, by offering that passion that I had, that talent that I found through coaching, I was able to provide so much value to our community. So I want to encourage all of you to think about what is it that really genuinely excites you? and find a way to offer that. So for example, here, uh, some of us are excited about fishing and boating. So maybe you can organize a trip, and take people out uh, to the river, or to the ocean, uh, to go fishing, go boating, and, and experience that joy together with you. Or maybe uh, you're a talented flower arranging artist. 
And you can host a class and teach, teach others on how to arrange beautiful bouquets. Or maybe you're a talented dancer. And if that's the case, maybe you can create a dance group or train others to dance and perform for our community. So there's many different things that uh, you can do to, um, again, use your talents and passions to contribute to your community. The second thing I'd like you to consider in really building and contributing to God's dream beyond offering your talents is to invest in your family. You know, we are the Heavenly Parents Holy Community. We are also the Family Federation for World Peace. Uh, we're about family. We're about blessed families. And in order to really uh, live up to that, that calling or that, that kind of assignment as a blessed family, it's really important to invest in our families. So I want to encourage you to, you know, uh, take, take your spouse on a date or take your child out for a date. Um, spend some intentional quality time together, you know, as busy as you are. I know I've always, I've been busy a lot recently, but I really make an effort to make sure that there's some time every day to check in with my spouse, uh, at least have dinner together as a family, and um, really once a week to set aside time uh, to take my wife out on a date. So I, I really want to encourage everyone, regardless of how busy you are, to intentionally invest in your family. And thirdly, I'd like to encourage you to to serve your local community. And I'm talking beyond our church community. You know, you can get to know your local community and find a way to serve. You can call your local town or city's mayoral office and ask if there's a need or volunteer opportunities. It's really important. Or maybe join a local Toastmasters club or um, a veterans association or, uh, you know, a community watch group. Whatever it is, find a way to get involved with your local community. If we're really going to become known as peacemakers, we need to go beyond our community and really interact and serve the larger community instead of just staying within our own comfort zone. So please, as part of our effort to uh, really build that dream, you know, it's a beautiful concept, a beautiful vision. But to get it practical and down to the ground, offer your talents, invest in your family, and serve your local community. Uh, here's a, a, an image of a recent, I think this is a food pantry, uh, where uh, some of our youth in the New York, New Jersey area got together, and they were able to volunteer and serve in that way. And there are more than enough you know, service opportunities out there. So I want to encourage everyone to, to really take the time to research, to call, and to find a way to serve your community. So we're uh, coming to the secret of the week, the secret to fulfilling our vision by 2027. I believe it's the junk song that Dr. Young, our regional president has been really investing in and having us as a national team. If you haven't started already, I want to encourage you to try it out. It's 6 a.m. Eastern every day, uh, edu.familyfed.org. You can um, really join in and experience really engaging in God's word, checking in with our community nationwide, and really offering this jung uh condition, this part of investment based on God's word that will really uh, bring more meaning to your life, spiritual foundation, and also contribute to the whole nation. The second is teamwork. Um, really, if we want to fulfill our vision by 2027, we need everyone's help, uh, not just a few people at the top. We need everyone's effort. So I really believe that on the foundation of individual junk song that we're all contributing, we need teamwork. And then finally, this is a new element that I really want to bring, and that is coaching support. You know, imagine being clear 
about what you want to contribute. Imagine being able to let go of your fears and limiting beliefs. And imagine getting the support you need to have a fulfilling filial life of developing your blessed family and being a peacemaker for your community. I really believe that uh, coaching support can, can provide a lot of that for us. You know, we have the principle, we have God, we have the model of a true parent's life. Uh, and if we can add some expertise in this area of uh, empowering people, then I believe we can really uh, accelerate our progress towards our goals for 2027. So this is my passion, and I'm excited to share what I learned um, and provide it to all our members and leaders nationwide. I still have to work out some details on how I'll be able to do that, but um, yeah, this is this is something that I feel will make a, a big difference for our, our national community. So I want to leave you with a question, and that is, what is it that you want to contribute? Because in order for this to work, everyone needs to contribute their time and talents. So in conclusion, I'd like to read a final ver uh, passage. Um, I hope you embrace the world's people and educate them through the message of truth and become the lamp for the 7.7 .7 billion people of the world. I hope that you all lead the way in opening the era where humankind's wish, heavenly parents dream and true parents dream of one human family under God can be realized. Uh, this is a, a message from Mother Moon back in 2017. You know, from the very beginning, all God wanted was a world full of families centered on true love. And Father and Mother Moon have dedicated their whole lives in supporting God and fulfilling that dream. Mother Moon right now is encouraging us to develop our holy community. So, Let's put some love into our holy communities. Let's offer our God-given talents, invest in our families, and love our community. Together, we can make God's dream come true.